How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be featuring the Yoshino, the legendary tier Japanese large cruiser. At first glance, this ship very much looks like an Azuma, and you aren't wrong, it pretty much is, although there are a few differences that honestly makes the Yoshino an excellent ship. One of those differences that you just saw, the Yoshino has access to torpedoes, it has access to 8 torpedoes per side and 2 torpedo launchers, and these torpedoes are very good. In this ship, you have the ability to equip two different types of torpedoes. One of them is a 12 kilometer torpedo that deals 23,000 damage per torpedo. And then the other option is a 20 kilometer torpedo that deals around 21,000 damage. But the 20 kilometer torps are spotted at two and a half kilometers. Ultimately, I decided to go with the 20 kilometer torpedoes mainly because it fits the playstyle and is honestly a really good complement to how this ship is technically supposed to be played. Now, typically you'd want to be shooting HE in the ship, although if you see a Minotaur parking broadside, don't be afraid to switch to AP and absolutely wreck those cruisers. Anyway, back to the torpedoes. So like I said, I typically use the 20 kilometer torpedoes on this ship mainly because it's a good complement on how you would want to play this ship, which for the most part you want to be angled away in front of an enemy push, which this is one of the reasons why I use the 20 kilometer torpedoes. I can stay a decent range and still make use of these torpedoes trying to use it as a zoning tool where we simply flood a flank with torpedoes and force the enemy to either stop pushing or if they decide to keep pushing chances are you will land some torpedoes. Now obviously launching torpedoes from an extreme distance chances are none of the torpedoes will actually hit although this forces the enemy to actually think about your torpedoes and have to make adjustments to their course and this does sometimes cause the enemy player to have to either take their attention away from you in order to dodge torpedoes and since they're spotted from so far away typically they will start dodging and look at the torpedoes which can sometimes give you those few seconds that you need but ultimately it is a zoning tool which you just want to keep launching as soon as they're loaded especially on a flank that an enemy is pushing now the torpedo angles on the Yoshino are very similar to that of the Otago where one torpedo tube can launch from broadside to the front and then broadside to the rear. So essentially if you wanted to get off both torpedoes on the same target you would have to show quite a bit of broadside which I highly do not recommend. This ship has an extremely large citadel very much like the Azuma and battleships and some cruisers will have no problem citadeling you. So just make sure that if you're going to decide to try and launch all your torpedoes, make sure that you are undetected and hopefully there's not a destroyer that's going to spot you as you're doing so. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here because unfortunately that GK stopped pushing and since I'm actually using the rudder shift mod instead of propulsion mod, I couldn't simply slow down and try to reverse to keep up with him. So now I just simply reposition myself to the middle of the map since we do not really have to worry about any ships pushing down this right flank. An enemy gearing does get spotted after beaching, and, well, the Yoshino, like the Azuma, has some fairly accurate main guns, as well as some hard-hitting HE, so whenever a destroyer is spotted, don't be afraid to take shots at the destroyers, because chances are you will deal a ton of damage that they can't repair. If you decide to use a Zer lane Otago, well, your HE will hit even harder and have an even better fire chance. In this game, however, I'm actually using Isoroku Yamamoto, mainly because I have my Otago built for the heavy and light cruisers, and, well, simply using Yamamoto with Igniter in that second row, you already have a 30% fire chance, which to me is good enough. Also, being at legendary tier and being such a large ship with a large citadel, I find that having four repair parties is a little bit more useful than slightly more damage, especially since Azurlian Otago's special skill does force you to take 10% more damage and also does not have access to fully packed, so you actually are only limited to three repair parties. And of the games that I've played in Yoshino, there's been quite a few where I wish I had one more repair party, 
when I was using Otago, which, although this game I've not really been shot at at all, the other games where I have been focused quite a bit because, well, the Yoshino is the new ship, it was a bit more difficult, and at least for now, I think I'm just going to stick with Yamamoto. Now, the other difference that I haven't mentioned yet about the Yoshino compared to the Azuma is the fact that the Yoshino's main guns reload in 16 seconds. I believe the Azuma's guns reload in 21 seconds, which, if you think about it, this is a huge upgrade. And if you want to compare it to a ship like the Otago and even the Ibuki, the Tier 8 Japanese heavy cruiser, well, you have about 3 seconds longer of a main battery reload, however you have a much higher fire chance, higher alpha, and a ship that has much more HP and typically better armor. And since you're not really relying on torpedoes in the ship, your main guns are the bread and butter, which so far in this game I've done 145,000 damage and we're still going. So, just by these main guns, this ship can deal a huge amount of damage. Now, I do switch to AP here because there is a Kronstadt that's sailing broadside. Although, we don't exactly get the best dispersion here, so we're not really able to Citadel the Kronstadt. Now, the AP penetration is quite good using shiptool.st, which essentially is a resource for the PC version, which does cover a lot of the hidden stats that we can't really see. Although, because it is the PC version, you do take it with a grain of salt. But the Yoshino, and even the Azuma, does have actually better penetration for the AP shells than the Alaska. Although, it's not really anywhere near the Stalingrad. And I'm sure after the Alaska nerfs to the penetration, I'm sure that gap is actually larger now. So, if you do actually find an opportunity to switch to AP on even some of the heavy armor targets, do not be afraid to switch because chances are you will either citadel them or if you don't citadel them you will deal a lot of penetration damage. So managing your shell types and not just simply sticking to HG will honestly make you a much better player and you will more than likely succeed when playing the Yoshino. Now the final difference between the Yoshino and the Azuma is the fact that the Yoshino's bow armor is only 25mm and it does not have access to a 30mm icebreaker like the Azuma has, which honestly I didn't really have any sort of issues with the Yoshino being overmatched through the bow or stern, especially considering the way that this ship really should be played at range, and also angled away and having your ship moving instead of being bow in and reversing. I don't think having a 25mm bow is honestly that much of an issue, all this really does is forces you to play angled and well instead of just simply being bow in and reversing you should just be moving around and getting those torpedoes off. At this point the game's pretty much over, their last enemy destroyer does get spotted right in front of most of our team. I take a pot shot and he does have propulsion mod and does accelerate out of the way just enough. We do get one shell hit although it wasn't really enough to kill him off which is a bit unfortunate. We do get the win though, and with that game I actually finish my campaign missions. I decided to go with the Marco Polo first, although I did get the Marlboro a little later, and honestly between the two I think I do prefer the Marlboro. The Marco Polo isn't bad by any means, it's actually quite good, and the sap shells that it has can absolutely smash enemy cruisers and battleships, although typically I am shooting AP most of the time anyway, and then that extra 3.5 second reload does hurt quite a bit, which is why I haven't been using the sap mod, and then if I'm not using the sap mod, there's not really a difference between the Marco Polo and any other battleship that you should be shooting AP in, especially with a ship like the Musashi that exists, even the Marlboro, none of these battleships that's being added later, are going to be as interesting, because the Musashi is basically a Yamato. Going over my build, Beyond Range, Igniter, I do use Velocious here in the third row, I could use Punch Through instead, so perhaps that AP might have been a little bit better. And then fourth row, we do use Fixated for that grouping and dispersion. And then our Legendary Scale is fully packed, so I can have one more Repair Party. 
Now my inspirations, I go with Kuznetsov just to get a little more range because if you don't use Kuznetsov, my main battery range is about 17 and a half kilometers, which if you do use Kuznetsov as an inspiration, you do break that 18 kilometer mark. And if you need to play passive, if you're low on HP, you can play a bit more passive at range and Kuznetsov makes it a little more comfortable. My other inspiration is actually Einstein. I just picked him up in the store since he was only, what, 3,500 doubloons? And then I buffed him up to rank 15. No legendary skill on him because I have no intention of actually using him on my American cruisers. I just needed a little buff to the turret traverse because without him, the turret traverse is extremely slow. I also opted for the fighter plane instead of the spotter plane, mainly because I find that having a spotter to help provide spotting over islands does benefit this ship a bit more than having a spotter that makes your accuracy 10% better for 30 seconds but that one is entirely up to you anyway that's all I have for you in this video I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did leave a like and subscribe for more and share it with your friends or leave a comment down below for other ships you want to see in the future but until next time Aloha